I'm gonna read. Junie B. First Grader One Man Band by Baba Park. Illustrated by Dennis Brancas. Chapter 4 Choices. Tuesday. Dear First Grade Journal, our recess was not fun today. I sat on the playground and I stared at my sore tore through my pico window. Sheldon sat next to me. He kept pressing on his red band, band aid, and saying, Ouch! I told, I told him to knock off, knock it off. I am not in good mood. From D.B. First Grader. After I got done writing, I heard talking in front of the room. I looked up. Lucille was standing in at Mrs. Segarri's desk. Camille and Chanel were standing there too. All of them were blabbering at the exact same time. Mr. Scary covered his ears. Finally, he said, whoa, 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 at them. And he pointed for them to sit back down. After that, Mr. Scary stood up, and he walked to the front of the room. Boys and girls, it has come to my attention that not everyone in room will want to play in the kickball tournament. He said his eyes glanced over to Camille and Chanel. It seems that two of, two of our ch- classmates would rather be cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. He said, and other ones would like to be. This time, his eyes glanced at Lucille. Homecoming queen, he said. Lucille spreading right up, right up. No, no, princess, she called out. I want to be homecoming princess, Mr. Scary. Not queen. Princesses are way cuter than queens. Plus, princesses aren't old. She looked at children and fluffed herself. Well, do you hear me? See, the, see me, everyone. I'm going to have a beautiful flaw made out of pink rose petals, she said, and there will be a gold crown for me to sit on. She looked all around the room. Maybe a few of you girls might like to be my attendant, she said, my, but my nana will have to look you over first. Mr. Scary went to the sink and you in the back of the room, and he took an aspirin. Room one started buzzing about Lucille. Then some of the children started thinking about different jobs that they could have in the tournament too. Hey, maybe I can be a game announcer on the loudspeaker, said Roger. And after the game, I can pour roots beer on all the winners. Yeah, said Shirley, and I could see all the rice crisps he treats. My mother says those things are all perfect. Just then the maid jumped up. I, and I could be a crowd control, she called out, because I already have a budge at home, and so all I need is a back stick to poke people with and a gas mask. Mr. Scary took another aspirin. Then he walked back to his desk and he took a uh, he took a big breath. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, here's the best I'm going to do for you guys. He said, "I I'll give everyone in for here two choices of jobs. You can you can either play in the games at the part of the team, or you can be a cheerleader." cheerleader but that's it that's my best offer Lucille stood up at her desk she f- flounced her dress very upset then she plopped back down again after that Sheldon stood up too and he pointed to his band-aid but, but what about this Mr. Scary have you forgotten about my injury she, he asked I can't play in the game, remember? And, and cheerleader is just for girls. Mr. Scary frowned. Well, that's not actually true, Sheldon. Lots of college have male cheerleaders. He said, but since you may, 
you and Junie B both have endurance, I'll let you two pick different jobs to do in the tournament. Okay? That would only be fair. Sheldon looked relieved. Yes, he said. I was hoping you'd say that because I already know that I'm going to do. He quickly climbed on his chair and made an announcement. I'm going to a halftime show. I'm going to have the halftime show. Show, he said. Mr. Sterry grabbed him and put him back in his seat. A halftime show? He asked, kind of curious. Sheldon nodded real fast. Yes, 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 he said. Cause my dad used to play in the climb, climb, climb balls and his, and his high school band. And he already saw me how. Plus, he still has his band uniform, cause my mother can't fix it to fit me. And then I can't, I can't march and play the combos like a real professional band guy. Oh wait, here another, here's another idea. Maybe I can sing too, cause I learned some songs at Christmas. And my dad says I can almost carry a tune. Mr. Scary smiled. You know that. What well, you know what, Sheldon? I think that's a fine idea. He said, in fact, I think a little halftime internment would be ex ex excellent. Sheldon clapped some more. Yay, I I'll start practicing soon, soon as soon as soon as I get home, he said. Mr. Scary smiled again. Then he raised his eyebrows and he looked back at me. So, Ginny B, what do you think? If Sheldon does a halftime show, would you like to be in it too? He asked, I bet playing in the instrument would be not too hard on your sore toe. Sore toe. And I'm sure Sheldon would be happy to have another band member. I did a loud growl. Then I put my head back on my seat and I cover it up with my sweater again. Chapter 5 is called Lemonade. After school, Mr. Scary called Mother at her work and he told her that I got disappointed about the tournament. That's how come for dinner that Pesquette 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 and meatballs plus she and daddy tried to act, be extra nice to me. I know you're upset of, about not being in the kickball game, mother said, but everyone else with a disappointment is like I me. Mean, I was still in bad mood. I hate disappointed people. I hate disappointments. I hate them, I said. Mother said they patted me. Yes, well, we all hate being disappointed, Jenny B, he said. But Mr. Scary said you can still do something fun in the tournament. I did a mad breath. <sighs> I hate that damn tournament. I hate it. I said, Dad is squinted his eyes at me. He said to please stop saying hate. I hate saying hate. I hate it. I said, after that, Dad picked me up and he carried me to my room for a timeout. It was not an... Um, Expect. Unexpect. I waited till he was gone. I hate times out. I hate them, I whispered to my soft elephant named Olive Johnny Bob. I hate them too, Johnny B, he said back. I hate everything you hate. You and me hate everything exactly the same. I helped him very kind. I love that guy. After that, both of us flopped on my bed, and he, we calmed ourselves down. Pretty soon, Mother came and got me, and she sh she took me back to my the table. I did not talk to Daddy. Also, I did not talk to my baby brother named Ollie, because he just learning words, and all he keeps saying is moo. M-O-O, -O, moo. Mother tried to be nice some more. Are you sure you wouldn't like to be a cheer cheerleader, JB? She said. I know you couldn't jump up and down on your 
store too. But you can you can still yell and shout for your team. That it is a chocolate. And yelling and shouting are right up your alley. He teased. I did not laugh at that remark. Daddy poked me. Oh, don't be so long, he said. Being a cheerleader, it won't be so bad, wouldn't it? Would it? Every little girl's like cheerleading. I roll my eyes at that ceiling. But I'm not if every little girl, Daddy. I am just me, Ginny B. Jones, and I don't want to be a cheerleader. I want to be on the kickball team. Just then, my nose started to sniffle very much. I even had a daydream about it. I said I was a star of the whole entire game, and it was very wonderful. Only now that it's never going to happen. Mother gave me a hug. Well, no one can be a star all the time, she said. It's just like the I said earlier. Everyone has disappointments sometimes. Right, said Daddy, and w- and when life's hand your lemon, you lemons, you have to learn to make lemonade. I look weird at that now, huh? I said, "What's lemonade got to do with this?" Mother smiled. It's just sa- a saying, indeed, she said. It means that when life goes a little bit sore, you need to find a find a way to sweeten it. Up the beat. Just then, Daddy went to the refrigerator and he took out the three lemons. Here, look, I'll show you, he said. He held up the lemons for me to see. See what I have there? Here, he said, they're just three soft, sourly old lemons, right? I did a shrug. I guess so. That agree. Ah, but maybe these store lemons are more fun than they look, he said. Then one by one, he threw each lemon into the air. And while we while while he started to juggle them in a and I mean it. He did. My daddy juggled those lemon lemons way high in the air. And I didn't even know that he had that talent, a clap and cheer very thrilled. Ollie clapped too. Also, he said, moo. Then all of us started to laugh. And Daddy did a bow. Do you see what I mean now? He asked. I turned three little sour lemons into something more fun. And you can do the same thing, Junie B. The matter, all you have to do is turn it. And then your sorrow situation will happy. Turn happy too, understand? I nodded very fast. I do, mother. I do understand. I said. And guess what else? I think I already know what I'm going to do. I jumped down from my chair and I picked up the lemons from the counter. I think I'm going to juggle. I said very joyful. I I'm ju- I all juggling is shall that halftime show and then everyone will clap and cheer and i will be a star of that whole production after that i stood in the middle of the kitchen just like that i did and one by one i threw each lemon into the air i kept my eyes on them very perfect only too bad for me because two of them crashing to the, the table plus the other one hit all all in the head he started to cry i bet it I patted him real fast. Then I quick pick up the lemons and I hurried up to my ta- my room, cause juggling was going to take a little practice, apparently. And there were only three, three days, three days left until Friday. Chapter six is called practicing. Wednesday. Dear first grade journal, last night daddy helped me practice my juggling. I kept on throwing those lemons into the air and they kept on crashing into my floor. Floor. Finally I got frustration in me and I threw them as high as I could. The first one cracked my ceiling side. 
light. The next one fell on my bed, and I knocked out my writer and Andy named Larry. Lemons are not as easy as they look. Friday is only two more days away. I'm getting stressed, Emmy, from Green Bee first grader. As soon as I finished writing, Mr. Scary walked to the front of the room and he asked us to put away our journals. Boys and girls, there are a few more things I need to tell you about the kids that came in on Friday. He says for one thing, today and tomorrow, we'll be taking after a long recess for Fredos to get ready. He looked around the class. Those of you playing on the team will be practiced on the softball league. And those of you who were cheerleaders will be practicing on the slide line. Slide line, he told us. Camille and Janelle jumped right up from her their seat. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, we have good news, said Camille. Yes, we do, said Janelle. Our mother has a cheerleader in college, and last night she saw us some cheerleader cheers. Right, said Camille. And so today she knelt, and I can't teach down to the other girls. Mr. Scary smiled very pleased. That's ex- that's excellent, new girls. He said, "I'll put you two in charge ch- of teaching the cheer." Cheers. Then I will have more time to work with the kickball team and the halftime show. He looked back in the direction. Oh, and speaking of the halftime show, have you met? Have you made a de- decision about what the what you want to do yet? Maybe I started to nod very loud. Then all of a sudden I stopped. On the count of what if I told Room One that I was going to juggle in halftime show, only I still couldn't learn that call on Friday Friday. Then some of the other children might shout boo at me. Plus other might laugh and laugh. I tapped on my best very thinking. But on the other hand, maybe I should just tell my class the whole entire truth. His mother says the truth is always there. Only that is not the truth, of course. But maybe this one time, the truth might be just easiest. GB, said my teacher again. I stood up at the desk and I looked at the room one in their eyes. Okay, here's the whole entire truth. I said I am trying to learn how to juggle for children's halftime show. Only please do not, not get your help. Of children, people, cause I might, I maybe might not learn in it in time, and so if I don't don't struggle at half time, there is no laughing or booing allowed. And I mean, and I mean, I quick sat back down again. Lenny and her turned around in their seat. Whoa, you're learning to juggle," said Lenny. "That's cool." Yeah, it's cool," said Herbert. "I wish I could juggle." They rolled their eyes. I don't," she said. "What's so fun about throwing stuff in the air? And anyway, juggle is only for the circus. Who ever heard of juggling in the halftime show?" I wrinkled my eyebrows, very curious. Hmm, that's a good question, me. Let me think. I said, then I leaned real close to her face. Me. That's so, I said, Lenny and her heard laugh very hard. The ch- then Jonathan looked back at me, and he gave me a happy thumbs up. Ta-da! Cause what do you know? This time, the work work, the truth work, beautifully. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe my channel. Bye!